Clubhouse has been out since the launch of Rainbow Six Siege, so why is it that the majority of players still don't know how to attack it to this day? Well, to be honest, that's most maps because simply put, attacking just requires more work than defense does. That's why today I'm going to try to help you improve those attacks on every site on Clubhouse so that you and your squad, or randoms if you solo queue, can increase your chances of winning your attacks and in turn win more of your rank games. It's time to be the champion you were born to be. Fuck yeah. A good place to start would be knowing which attacking operators are going to give you the best chance of winning on Clubhouse and understanding the effects that the bans have on the map. Clubhouse is a map where defenders don't have much room to play on most of the sites, which means opening as many walls as possible is going to be very strong to limit where the defenders can play safely. This is why Habana, Thermite, Maverick, and Ace all see a lot of playtime on this map, especially in Pro League. Having two of and sometimes even three of the four hard breach operators makes attacking this map so much easier, so that's step one of setting yourself up for success. The other two or three open spots are usually filled by Zofia, Sledge, or Buck, and then one of either Thatcher, if he's not banned, Capitao, Jackal, Twitch, Ayana, Finca, Fuse, or that third hard breacher as mentioned before, such as Ace. The strongest two attackers on this map are definitely Maverick or Thatcher, as either one of them make it much more simple to open the exterior walls on the top floor bomb sites without the added difficulty of clearing the Cades and Bandits beforehand. So if you're solo queuing, try to keep at least one of the two of them unbanned and run that op to help your team out the most. If they do end up both being banned, try your best to convince your team to ban Cade, otherwise this map is going to be an all new kind of hell while attacking. Banning out Mira or Valkyrie are also great options for defense bans on this map. Unfortunately, you do only have one ban, but in ranked, Mira tends to be insta-banned, so banning out Cade or Valk and then relying on the other team to ban Mira is a pretty safe bet. If Mira is up, you can use Ace's Selmas or Havana's Pellets to open them, which is especially easy with the help of a Thatcher for the ones that are muted or banded. If Maverick survives the ban phase along with Cade, don't worry because Maverick a wall isn't that tough. I'm planning on making a Maverick guide in the near future for the safest way to map trick every wall, so that might be up on my channel by the time you're watching this video, but if not, there's a short guide on my TikTok. I'll link the video for it in the description. Okay, so you've got your bands, you have a good idea of what operators your team wants to bring. Now let's get into the actual sites and the different ways to attack them effectively. Public service announcement. Crouch walking around the map with no drones is not an effective way to attack. It might work sometimes, but it's unreliable and super Super easily countered. Ella shotgun. If you are against crouch walkers, just run Ella shotgun and shotgun them when they walk into your Ella mine. Simple counter. Right there. So anyway, let's start off with the basement bomb site. If you're in a squad, you're gonna to want to get control of the top of the map and work your way down. The easiest way to get control of the top and middle floor is from the very start of the round. Having one drone set up at the top of red stairs and another at the top of main stairs at the beginning of prep phase will allow you to see before the round even starts if any of the defenders go upstairs to roam. Using this information, you can then clear as a team from the top floor and work your way down to kill any of the roamers or push them back into the site. If you know they'll be basement or you don't have a squad, bring the jackal to make it even easier to track down those roamers. From there, the defenders will only have three ways out of the basement. Those would be the main staircase, the blue staircase, and the ladder up the oil pit. As Zofia, it's your responsibility to claymore the top of the oil ladder and garage to prevent defenders from climbing up, but be careful as they could always nitro impact the claymore to destroy it. This is a trick you could abuse on your defenses to get a long flank off in the middle of the round. After claymoring the oil ladder, Sophia can then sit in blue and pressure defenders from here. Using her stuns and impacts, she can clear utility on her own while simultaneously locking down the blue stairs flank. Having someone else at the bottom of main stairs does the exact same thing, giving the defenders a little less room to breathe and making it so they can't leave the basement without taking a fight that's really just not in their favor. If you don't have the two people to play these spots, just throw one of your drones on each staircase and flip between the two to know if anyone's trying to flank. There's a lot of power and effective droning, so try and hide your drone in a spot the defenders won't see it, so they don't even think that you know that they're flanking. To shut down the flank, you don't have to run into the gunfight with the flanking defender. Instead, figure out what route they're taking on their flank, position yourself in an area they'll eventually come through, and shoot them in the back as they walk past you. This technique can be applied to tons of maps and gives you fights that are nearly impossible to lose rather than a 50-50 head-on gunfight. Impossible to lose unless you're completely garbage, but, but you're not, you're not. 
So once those flanks are locked down, the next step is to open up all the hatches, which is most efficient with Habana. You'll also want to blast open dirt tunnel with Thermite, Maverick, Ace, or a Hard Breach tool if you have them. You can also use the Hard Breach tools on Cappy Tower Fuse to open up the Moto or Blue hatches. Typically, you'll only want to go for the Kitchen hatch with a ranged Hard Breach from Hib or Ace, as trying to place a Thermite here or Maverick the hatch could result in a C4 to the balls. Nobody wants a C4 to the balls. If Kate is left up, make sure you bring a Maverick, as he'll be your only hope of opening the Blue and moto hatches if they're electrified. A Kate on the kitchen hatch isn't the end of the world and you don't even need a Maverick for this one. The Electro Claw here is easily naded off through the floor, but you can also avoid it by acing the sides of the hatch or thermiting the floor next to it if you have the balls for it. <laughs> balls, because I said it before, you see, you see what? Anyway, if you have that third hard breacher, you can use Ace to open the church wall from bottom in as well, which leaves defenders with virtually no cover left to play on the church bomb site. This is the perfect example of that triple hard breach coming in handy to open up literally everything. One of the only spots they can be in at this point is right behind the vending machine, which is as easy as droning it out and tossing a grenade on him from the moto hatch, or just pushing into sight while pre-firing the spot. After that, you can plant on this black box in the corner while a teammate covers you from the bottom of main stairs. This will force the defenders to retake the site, giving you some easy gunfights and winning you at the round. Buck is another really strong operator to play on bottom main, as he can open up the back of the armory wall from here, allowing you to run into armory and get control of this site instead. If your team is unable to open the church wall, it is also still possible to go for a church plant too. The only requirements for this is that there are no defenders in blue, so getting blue control is key. There are many ways to do this. Firstly is using flashes to burn any ADSs or Wamai discs, and then nading out the player sitting behind the generator. Capitao is also extremely strong for this as you can flame either sides of the generator, forcing the defender to run out of blue or staying behind and getting cooked up like a fucking pig rose. If you find you don't have the utility to clear this player, pinching them from oil pit and blue stairs at the same time is very strong as well. Once you get control of blue, you can use it to try and kill the rest of the players in church, clearing out the bomb site. Either that or you can plant tucked on the vending machine with another attacker covering the plant from behind in moto for anyone trying to swing and kill the planner. If you really wanted to, you can send the whole team down blue for a flood, fighting the players in armory and planting after clearing out the site. This is a great option if you see the defenders are roaming heavily as you'll have a 5v1 or 5v2 on site, making for easy trades and killing the rest of the defenders trying to get back to site to help. The final attacking push that's worth discussing for basement is where you completely ignore the roam and only try to go for kitchen and dirt tunnel. This is really good if you're not confident in your roam clear and you want to just go directly for site. Have a teammate post up on the chain rappel to watch the kitchen hallway. This will stop flanking defenders from killing your teammates in kitchen and usually ends up in some freebies. While you have someone doing that, open up the dirt tunnel and kitchen hatch. Sledger buck is going to be necessary on the site to open up the floor of the kitchen as well as to clear any defenders out of back armory. Be careful though, this area is Nitro City so try to bait them out a bit first. Once you've accomplished that, you can have a few players go down dirt tunnel to clear any shields or players here. Grenades are going to be very helpful for this. From here, once you've got control of these two areas, you can drop the kitchen hatch and try to plant the bomb. Having a teammate on the hatch to watch the push through site and having the dirt pressure makes it near impossible for the defenders to kill you. Careful when you're dropping though because there are some really strong angles that the defenders can get to watch the kitchen drop from church and they will clap your cheeks. Smoke grenades are also going to be your friend while doing this and Capitao is especially strong as his flames prevent the defenders from running through the smoke grenades as well. Once you've planted the bomb, it's nearly impossible to lose if you have control of the kitchen, as you can shoot them from above when they attempt to defuse. This is why it's very important that you're ready for defenders flanking up the main stairs. If you shut that down, you're pretty much guaranteed to win on this one. Moving on up a couple floors, we have the CCTV bomb site with luxurious views, thousands of dollars worth of equipment, and all the satellite TV you could dream of. The most important aspect of attacking the site is making sure there isn't one anymore by blowing the walls back out and leaving nothing left. Seriously though. Opening the outer CC wall is incredibly important as it limits the defender's mobility through and around the site significantly. We already talked about Maverick tricking the wall, but there's a few things to keep in mind to keep it as safe as possible. Firstly is that if the wall's not electrified, you can mav it open from the rappel. This makes it impossible for defenders to see any parts of your body while opening it, and it's the safest way to do this. If it is electrified, get a teammate to shoot down the CC window first. That way if defenders want to sit in CC to try and shoot your ankles, they'll have a window open behind them that they'll be very exposed to. If you have that Claymore on Zofia, get her to Claymore the garage door for you. 
The last thing you want is someone impacting or running out of there while you have a blowtorch in your hand, turning you into a freebie for the defenders and causing your team to be unable to open the wall. Have your Zofia get up on the rappel to watch the map holes as you open them. This could lead to some free kills as well as make it much easier to win the round. Some good options for this are the side rappel next to the wall, which allows you to look all the way into the red hallway or on the actual breach itself to look in through the garage window and potentially kill the Raptors player before they have the time to get into a safe position. Now, obviously if Maverick is banned, none of this is even an option anymore, but if that's the case, using Thatcher to open the walls just as easy, even if the other team is bandit tricking. This requires three operators in each of them to complete their own simple task. As Thatcher, you'll throw two EMPs, three seconds apart. EMP, one, two, three, EMP. That's it. Thermite's just gonna have to place the thermite on the wall as the first EMP is about to explode and then ignite the thermite charge as soon as he can. He might take a little damage from the electricity off the start, but it's no big deal because you're gonna get the wall open, which is a definite trade that you want. As Zofia, make sure you're ready with your stuns equipped and then stun the drone hole three seconds after the first EMP goes off. Count to four and shoot your second one. One, two, three, stun. One, two, three, four, stun. Not only does this cancel bandit's animation when trying to place the batteries down, but the two EMPs will also disable any Cade who is trying to trick the breach using his claw. The EMPs should also get any ADSs by the drone hole, so you don't have to worry about that as though. Doing this every time guarantees the wall will be opened. However, if you drone ahead of time and figure out what you're actually dealing with, you might be able to save some stuns or an extra EMP depending on what you're up against. Okay, so you may also find yourself in a situation where both Maverick and Thatcher are banned, or you just simply don't have either one of them. Here's your options. You can grenade the wall denial off from the server window, but this is kind of sketchy because the defenders can peek the window while you do it. The other option is to go underneath from secret or stock and impact grenade or ash the stuff off from here. Clearing from underneath is not going to work if the wall is catered. At that point, you might as well just give up or rotate up to the server window and try to nade it off. While you are underneath though, you could try to go for some grenade kills to the floor like right here behind the green box and cash. You can also clear utility from here like the tuck shield and CCTV. Okay, so you've finally done it. Our big boy has finally graduated from plat wall breaching school. So what's next to win the CCTV attack? Well, there's two options to push next. The first option is taking garage and going for a server plant. And the second option is taking master and going for a cash plant. So which one's better? Well, that depends on a lot of things that I'll explain later, but I'll explain the basics of each attack first. So if you're going for garage, this is what needs to happen. After the CC wall is open, leave Zofia there to destroy any bulletproof cameras or shields in CC and to play on the far rappel afterwards. This is the safest spot to sit and if they swing into server, it should be some free kills for you. Just be careful of the hop out of the secret window. If you have a second claymore, this is probably my next in line for where it should go. Next, you'll want to try and get the lower garage walls open. And while we're talking about garage, I just want everyone to hear that you should never peek the rafters guy from the garage door. This fight is insanely hard to win as an attacker, so just avoid it in general if you can. Which, just don't go near it and don't peek it and you're fine. So opening the bottom garage walls will make it very easy to clear out anyone playing around the bikes or under the stairs. Once that's done, you need to try and kill the player in rafters, while being cautious of defenders coming into swamp to shoot you in the back. For this rafters player, all you need to do is throw three flashbangs up into R2 to burn any ADSs and potentially blind the player here, and then grenade it afterwards. Either that or Capitao can turn this into a one-man job if Wumai isn't playing here. While you're doing this, it is extremely helpful to have your Zofia actually up on the platform to look into Garage to kill that player if he tries to run away from the utility. This rafters guy should be dead at this point, but if he's not, what you'll need to do is push up the rafters stairs and try to kill him. Be aware while coming up here, there's some deadly angles from cash, oil pit, and swamp that you'll have to watch out for. It's gonna be much easier to drone these out ahead of time so you know what's safe and what isn't. So now that you've got rafters control, you'll wanna try and plant on the server rack with your breach player holding the cross for any defenders trying to run up and deny the plant, but there's still C4s and smoke canisters that can be tossed from cash to crush your hopes and dreams like a hydraulic press. You've seen those videos. That thing destroys everything. That thing destroys everything, man. Hydraulic press. Okay, so at this point, if you set up a cam underneath and lounge, a dead teammate can watch it and hopefully call for anyone trying to nitro from here, while the bomb boy can fake the plan a couple times to bait out some smokes or C4s. The cover from the CC plat and rafters should be enough for you to plant the bomb, and at that point, it's guns blazing. The CC repel is the strongest player to stop the defuse here, as he can deny the plant spot, but you can also use this nasty head glitch to mow down defenders if the numbers aren't in your favor. All right. Let's say both the garage walls are cated and the other team's playing a Wamai in there as well. This would be a situation where garage is stacked against you, making master an easier target. The same theory applies where you want to open the CC wall first and leave your Zofia on the far rappel because again, that makes it so no defenders can rotate through server. What you'll then want to do is use the construction window, lodgy hatch, and jacuzzi balcony to pressure and get control of the master side up to construction. 
Opening the lodgy wall to con with buck or sledge makes it very easy to hold the construction door and get some deadly angles into cash for slacking defenders. Be careful of the main stairs flank too, this one's popular. From there, it's important to open up the cash wall to safely and easily clear the players out of cash. Going prone in construction will allow you to see any defenders playing behind the green box. After you know cash is clear, it's all nades, baby. Use the grenades on red and tuck to kill anyone in these spots, and as the planner, plant backwards on the breach so you can't be seen by players in red or rafters. You'll want someone gun up on the red rotate to shoot defenders trying to smoke or nitro from here, but you can still bait some utility out first as a planner if you have the time. If they try to run through server, your breach player will kill them, or should at least, and if they try to run through cash from red, your construction player will kill them. At this point, the only way the plant can be stopped is by a C4 or smoke, which is why if possible, you want somebody with Shiko aim covering you to snipe the C4 out of the air like a fucking champ. Pushing any further than this shouldn't be necessary, but it can be a solid backup option if something goes wrong. Some other great tricks for this site are coming up red stairs late to shoot the red players in the back, hopping in the server window after getting con control to fight the Raptors player, or fast rushing the breach off of a thermite charge. This is also known as the Yardy Special. Now let's cha-cha slide across the top floor to the gym bedroom bomb site. The first thing to recognize about this site is that it can be easily pressured from outside the bomb site using the master windows, lodgy hatch, and jacuzzi breach. What this means is that you can pressure any of these spots early in the round, which can lead to easy kills on sloppy defenders, especially in lower ranks. The first really strong trick I want to show is that this angle from the rappel of the jacuzzi breach can see anyone in cash, including behind the weight rack, which is a very common spot for defenders. Anyone trying to rotate in and out of gym using the default rotate is going to be cut off and well, they're going to get smoked. Opening the construction wall on this site is also very strong as you can cut off any defenders trying to cross back from cash side and kill players sitting in the tuck beyond the bed. If you're solo queuing, this is a great site to lurk around in different areas looking for picks because it's typically defended in a very sloppy fashion. Now let's time travel back to that jacuzzi wall for a second. What's the easiest way to open it? In my opinion, it's easiest to simply throw a flash in through the drone hole to check for an ADS, then get a teammate to throw a grenade in to destroy anything on the wall. From here, you'll want to open the right side of the wall, then get on the left hand side rappel to watch that gym rotate as mentioned before. The next step in this direct take would be to open up the bathroom wall to leave no cover for the defenders trying to play in here. Acer Habana is going to be key for this. If Thatcher is up, you can use him to disable any wall denial on the wall as well, but if not, a few flashes to burn and a grenade banked off the wall will do just fine. This might even kill the defender playing here. To add even more power to this attack, have someone work their way into the building from Strip Club. Drone it out first, or get a cut drone for it in prep phase so you don't get surprised by a lurking defender. Once your teammate is ready by main stairs and you've got the bathroom wall open, it's as easy as droning out the site to see where the defenders are left playing, and then pushing in at the same time to kill them. Once that's done, you can plant safely in gym behind the weight rack and should be set up for another win. The other way to attack the gym bomb site is from CCTV side, which allows you to utilize the master windows better because the defenders are then unable to peek you from CCTV because you already took control of it. So to do this, you'll want to open the CCTV wall first and then clear any shields or utility the defenders may have set up in the red hall. After that, you can open up the cash wall and clear players out of cash room. If you take your time with this, you'll probably get a couple free kills out of it and most likely have won the hard part if you proceed with caution for the rest of the round, which I understand can be a lot to ask for even at the top ranks. So step one of proceeding with caution is setting up your flanks. Just a single drone and lounge is enough so you've got nobody to blame but yourself if you lose the round off of a flank here. After this, you'll want to open up the lodgy hatch and maybe even the jacuzzi breach if you have the time and utility for it. The defenders are completely surrounded now with their only safe spots being bathroom, gold, and main stairs. This makes the most obvious plant spot and master behind the mattress if you can get there using some flashes or smokes as you cross. If not, don't sweat. A collapse through lodgy or from jacuzzi side late in the round will make for an easy pinch on the remaining defenders, but it probably won't even get to this point with the aggressive rank style that most ranked players seem to have. In other words, get your freebies on the players in cash and construction, and then don't choke. Now, the final site is Bar, which is honestly not that bad of a site, but 99 out of 100 ranked players just don't fucking know how to defend it properly for whatever reason, which means the odds of having the five people you're up against know how to play it well is literally nothing. What this means for you is that you can more than likely walk around the map and bait for kills in order to win the site, or capitalize on some common mistakes and plant the bomb. The first mistake I see a lot is that people reinforce this kitchen hallway wall. If that's the case, it's very easy to get stock control and push into the site after clearing out the close area. It makes it very easy to plan 
stand on this vending machine with a couple teammates in stock covering the pushes through the two lanes and bar. This is even stronger if you throw a teammate on the bar window at the same time. Ideally, you would also have garage, lounge, and lobby control beforehand for a stronger attack. The two concepts for an actual take on the site consist of one, a strip side take, and two, a garage side take, with the strip take being much, much easier, so let's just talk about that one. Getting control of strip club is priority number one. You may have to open the outer walls with a hard breach if it's reinforced, but it should be relatively easy to get control of this area. Once that's done, you can also open up the stage wall from strip and get someone to post up here to cut the rotates through sight. Next up is clearing out the gym hatch so you can actually push through pool table without getting your cheek slapped from above. To do this, you can open up the jacuzzi wall along with the lodgy hatch and work your way in to take lodgy, master, gym, and main stairs. Again, you're gonna get your kills on the roamers if you take your time with it and have man advantage putting you in a great spot. Once you've gotten control upstairs, be careful of your construction flank. Having a teammate gun up on this door works perfectly and allows them to drop the bar hatch late in the round to shoot unsuspecting defenders in the back. From here, you can either work vertical control on the site to clear people out of bar or come down main stairs to fight defenders in this area. It really helps to have a teammate come in from kitchen to pinch players playing here. Once you got control of the main stairs and kitchen hall area, a plant is pretty simple, either up by the jukebox or behind the bar. Coming in from the stalls to plant is probably the safest option, but you could make a break for it from pool table. Like I said before, it probably won't even get to this point where you need to plant, but if it's free to do so, it'll give you a huge advantage and most likely win you the round. So there you have it. That's how to attack every site on Clubhouse. Of course, these attacks aren't going to work 100% of the time, but ideally you can take some of the concepts and ideas from this video to improve your attacks and understand how to attack the map a little bit better. Siege is a game of constant learning, and the more you learn, the better you'll become. So if you took absolutely anything out of this video, it could help you win at least a little bit more in the future. If you enjoyed the video and want to learn more, make sure to subscribe for more in-depth Rainbow Six strategy. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Have a fantastic day.